everyone, this is Sony Patnai. Welcome to HDFC Securities Webinar Series 2, where we would be covering on the derivative data analysis. In this session, we would be understanding some of the important derivative indicators and its analysis and importance. So on the first slide, if you can see the content, what we would be covering in this session would be some basic indicators, important indicators, such as the open interest, put call ratio, volatility, rollover, and option chain. And how can we locate these on a pro terminal? So moving on to the first slide, where we would be understanding what derivative indicators, the first indicator to understand would be open interest. Now open interest basically means the number of outstanding or open contracts in futures and options both on an official exchange at any one time at the end of a trading session. Now, when traders keep their positions open and they haven't squared off their position, so what would happen is that they have this kind of movement coming in or they're expecting some movement to come in in the uh, you know coming trading sessions. So this is the reason why they have kept their position open. So this is what open interest usually means. So how to understand how open interest gets calculated? As you can see from this slide, we have uh, taken an example, small example, of three day session. On day one, we have Mr. A who's buying one contract and Mr. B is selling one contract. Now what happens usually during the session, during the market hours, you would calculate or you would see that open interest in this particular security gets calculated as two. But once the market hours ended, the exchange takes the final data from all the other exchanges and it calculates the total number of buys and sellers taking place in that particular security. So end of the day, one buyer is always equal to one seller because we know that in this market, there always is a buying position is always equal to a selling position. So there's always a anonymous exchange, anonymous trading happening in this exchange. So this is the reason why at the end of the day, in this particular security, you would see the final open interest being calculated as one instead of two because A is carrying one buying position and B is carrying one selling position. So this is why it is calculated as one. Now, day two, we are assuming that Mr. C has bought four contracts and B is selling four contract. Now, we are assuming that they are doing it in that same security itself, in the same, uh, in the same stock, in the same security itself. So what would happen is that in day two, C is buying four contract and D is selling four contract. So Day two, you would see four plus four, eight plus the previous day's one open interest. So it could actually come out to be as nine open interest. But once the market hours get over, you would actually see that it is four plus four, four buying and four selling. So it gets negated and gets calculated as four instead of eight. And plus the previous day's one open interest was already there. So it is four plus one, five gets calculated because every buyer is also equal to every seller position. Now on day three, you have A who is selling one contract and selling one contract means that A is squaring off its position and B is also squaring off its position. So what happens over here is that A and B, they've squared off their position. So ideally one contract and four contract are out, but B also has his position open and C also has his position open. So B has one contract still open. B has four contracts open. So ideally it should be five still open. But because A and B have squared of their position, they have a counterparty in front of them anonymously who must have taken the opposite position, opposite direction of those trades. So in this case, what happens is that it, the, those trades also would get calculated as an open contract, open outstanding, outstanding contract. So this is generally how open interest gets calculated. So in the end of the day, if someone would tell you that, you know, the open interest of ABC contract was seen at 1 lakh, it means that there were 50,000 buyers and 50,000 sellers. So one contract always equals to one buyer and one seller. So this is how open interest is calculated. Right, so moving on to the next slide. How to decode this open interest? Decoding open interest is very important because we have we already know how open interest gets calculated. That was the basic, the theoretical basic of understanding. But now what is the significance of this open interest? Usually open interest is paired with price action and volume action to understand what kind of activity is being built up. 
as you can see from this slide from this table itself we have three we have three important <coughs> uh, you know three important titles one is oi price and volume so if the open interest is positive or we can say that it is rising your price is positive or we can say that it is up or rising your volume is also in a heavy kind of an action we say that it's a long build up position taking place when we say long build up it generally means that fresh longs have been built up in that particular stock and trend seems positive for the short term now it's important to remember that if it's a short a long build up position it does not mean necessarily mean that the action must come in the next day itself it can be maybe after two days maybe after three days also so it just it means that you know we have to analyze how what kind of activity gets built up so open interest is positive price is positive and volume is also good it is a long built up position if your open interest is positive but your price is negative it means that it is falling down and volume is also good enough and heavy so it's a case of short built up position when we say short built up it means that fresh shorts have been built up in that particular stock or security and the trend is deemed as negative or bearish for short term trading session the third kind of an action is where your open interest is negative or we can say that it is shedding or we can say that it is unwinding so if your open interest is negative but your price is positive and volume is almost nil or flat it is a case of short covering what happens in short covering is that generally when a stock falls for a longer period of time and after that it comes as a bounce back the stock is bouncing back to some level so in those cases the traders who were trapped in the position they exit their position in that bounce back so the short positions or the shorts they get covered in that position in that bounce back so this is the reason when they are covering the position a open interest gets negative and your price is probably in a positive so we call it as a short covering position but here the price may be moving up but under pressure because there is no fresh contracts that get added so the trend is not exactly clear in this kind of an activity the last activity is where your open interest is negative your price is also negative and volume is probably nil or flat it is a case of long unwinding so here this is also a typical scenario where traders are squaring off their position and the trend is not clear for the trading sessions so we have four activities that we can understand from open interest one is a long build up position one is a short build up another is a short covering and the last is your long unwinding moving on to the next slide this is a screenshot from the pro terminal where you can understand where to analyze the open interest as you can see this is a small example a screenshot taken of one fno stock of nit technologies limited and this is if you click on the fno front you would get this as a home page for this particular stock so the, the here you can see there are various data included in this and we have marked one yellow there are two yellow arrows you can see so the yellow arrow pointing downwards you can see this the title is at change in open interest so it gives you a figure of 402773 in the bracket you can see it's at 28.31% so it shows it means that open interest for this particular stock is positive or up by 28.31% the price is also positive over here in this stock by 2.34% so it's a case of long build up you can see it in the other arrow point where it's pointing to the right hand side it's writing long build up why long build up again open interest is positive your price is also positive so it's a long build up action so trend is seen generally seemed positive for this kind of a stock for this kind with this kind of an activity so this is where we can locate it from a pro terminal right so now moving on to the next slide we have a 15 minutes build up feature in a pro terminal now we understand what built up could be it can be a short built up long built up short covering or a long unwinding and we understand what open interest helps us to act, uh, to analyze this kind of an activity of built up now this 15 minutes built up that we have in the pro terminal so what would happen is that you can click on any one stock and you could you would see that there's a small screen shot in front of you there's a small screen just by enlarging it you would get this entire feature so this entire uh, window gets opened up 
So here you can see that every 15 minutes there's an activity happening. As soon as the market opens, you get uh, after the 15 minutes is over the first market, you get the first activity being built up. So in this example, in this screenshot, you can see we have a Nifty Futures of uh, it was April series. Uh, so it's uh, showing up from 9.15 to 10.30 is where you can see the activity happening. So from 9.15 to 9.30, you can see it's a long build-up position. From 9.30 to 9.45, it's a short build-up. From 9.45 to 10 a.m., it's again a long build-up. From 10 to 10.15, is a short build-up. From 10.15 to 10.30, it's again a short build-up. So how to understand this 15 minutes? Because every 15 minutes, you would be getting a different activity formed altogether. So after a certain, you know, a measurable amount of time has passed by, maybe like one hour, one hour, 15 minutes or two hours, you can just measure whichever side gets more heavier. Maybe it's a long built up side or a short built up side and whichever side measures the most. So the trend usually remains on that particular side. Maybe it's on a long side if the long built up is happening more than the trend usually remains on the long side. In this case, we can see that the trend is remaining more on the short side because there are three short built-ups against two long built-ups. So the trend is generally deemed to be a slightly on the negative side. So it is good for an intraday understanding and analysis of a particular stock. So you can uh, analyze it after one hour, five, two hours, three hours, and all you have to just do is understand how, uh, you know, whichever activity gets formed more. So because this is a trend, this is an indicator, it will try to indicate and tell us how exactly which activity is being formed. So besides, you can also see in this screenshot, you have a price zone. It is showing you between which price to which price zone was that activity particularly formed. So you can understand the sentiment of the traders trying to form that kind of activity in that particular price zone. So it will help you to understand even much better that which price is acting as a good support of which price is acting as a good resistance that kind of a scenario also can be analyzed you can also see that there's a fresh column over there under that fresh column we have a number you know there's a, a 1728 1253 1842 641 these numbers are there in that fresh column it just shows you how many contracts got traded in that particular activity so this will help you to understand if there is any kind of unusual activity taking place in any kind of that unusual number of contracts getting traded in that particular activity in that particular price zone. So this is the importance of understanding open interest against how it is paired with the price action to understand which activity it gets formed. Right. So this is the importance. This is the first and most important indicator of the derivative open interest. Now moving on to the next slide. We have call a put call ratio. Also in short, it is known as a PCR. So put call ratio is again another very important tool or indicator to understand where the market sentiment is lying. So as the slide says, it is a popular tool to design to help individual investors gauge the overall sentiment of the market. It can be paired against both volume and open interest action. It has a very simple formula PCR or put call ratio is equal to the total traded put contracts divided by the total traded call contract. So your put contracts is a denominator, sorry, numerator and your call contracts is your denominator. So the mathematical logic says that if your PCR is rising, it means that your numerator is outperforming your denominator. And if your PCR is falling, it means that your denominator is outperforming your numerator. So in this case, if we say that, for example, a PCR of any stock, maybe ABC, is standing at 0 0.80, it means that for every 100 call traded contracts, there were 80 put contracts that got traded. So this is what it means. So usually every stock, every index will have a different put call ratio. Every stock will have a different range of put call ratio. But on a general basis, how do we analyze and understand put call ratio is that the sentiment is always deemed bearish if the PCR is trading at very relatively high levels or if it is trading at relatively low levels, we say that the sentiment is deemed bullish. It means that if the PCR is at relatively high levels, there's a chance of the stock facing some kind of weakness in the coming trading session. And if the put call ratio, the PCR is trading at relatively low levels, 
it means that there is a chance of these stock coming uh, you know facing a bullish sentiment in the coming trading sessions so this is how put call ratio is important so usually it is paired against both volume and open interest action but may majorly it is preferred against open interest so you can find a put call ratio of volume also you can find a put call ratio of open interest also and to find out the put call ratio there's a simple formula as we can remember it's a total traded put contracts divided by a total traded call contracts so this is another important indicator moving on to the next slide is another screenshot from the pro terminal where you can see there's this uh, you know entire uh, number of strike prices that we can see it in front of us again this example is taken on this particular stock called nit technologies limited you have two sides one is your left hand side is your call the right hand side is your put now you can see the yellow arrow that is pointing towards the call and the put so this is the entire part of the call and the put so it this this thing entirely is known as option chain so what happens over here over here you can see that you know the middle is your strike prices and you have certain columns oi is known as your open interest which we covered the side column is oi change then there is a volume there is an iv net change and ltp ltp is your last traded price you have individual strikes so this is called an option chain so to find out the put call ratio you can just divide the total put contracts that you can see in the oi column for example you can just take add all the open interest of all the strikes whatever comes out the amount divided with the total interest of all the oi on the call side so that will give you a put call ratio and over here you can also see that there is an, an easy way for us to you know we are seeing this current strike so this is the uh, all these strikes which are active currently active for this particular stock so you have all these strikes and in the side itself we can see there's a buy and sell so if you want to buy or sell any kind of or either of these options you can directly trade from here also by seeing looking at the open interest and the price action so open interest can also be measured for your futures it can also be measured against each individual strike also the formula remains the same if open interest is rising and your price is rising it's a long build up so here also against in each individual strike you can just see if your open interest is positive your price is positive that's how it gets calculated for options as well so this is known as your option chain so the first two indicators that we've covered is interlinked with each other one is open interest the other is your put call ratio so it is always interlinked with each other to understand what the sentiment says about a particular stock for the coming trading sessions now moving on to the next slide volatility very important indicator because volatility measures a lot of things so it is in a jargon kind of a language we say that it is a measure of the rate and magnitude of the change of prices of the underlying but in simple language volatility is understood by something called uncertainty by uncertainty it means that tomorrow where the stock would go where the market is going if the uncertainty is high you would not know if it is moving on to the particular right up direction or down direction so there is not a certain level there's a lot of uncertainty in the market or that particular stock so this is similar what volatility means so a stock who has low volatility it means that it will not fluctuate very dramatically it means that it will change the value will change at a very steady pace over a period of time if a stock has a very high volatility it means that it can hit a lot of new high or new lows maybe or it can move very erratically and dramatically and it will experience a lot of rapid increase in dramatic falls so this is what volatility measures for us it is only to do with the uncertainty in the levels so uncertainty level in the market or that particular stock so we say that when volatility rises the premiums of all the options it could be call option and put option all the premiums they rise very relatively they could get relatively high and when the op volatility drops the option premium also gets relatively low or it drops so this is how volatility is understood it has on, it, it's in simple terms again it is the uncertainty of the market or uncertainty of that particular security so we have something as a volatility we have implied volatility we have historical volatility and to understand volatility in terms of uh, how it is related to the market 
so we know what an index is already and the volatility of this entire index is known as the india vix so what happens with the india vix it generally uh, is assumed that if the india vix is falling it says that the market would probably remain in that same trend as it is going in that which, whichever trend it has opened for that particular day but if we say that the vix has risen or it has rising quite high so there is a lot of uncertainty coming in the market and because there is a lot of uncertainty in the market so tomorrow maybe the trend can remain either in the upside or the downside or it can fluctuate a lot maybe by going up and coming down a lot many times so this is how india vix is related with the market most of the times when india vix falls market does rise up but when india vix rises market remains on the down or a weakness weak kind of a position so this is how the relationship between india vix and market is considered before any event major event that comes you know we could have a budget we could have a rbi monetary policy or any other kind of major event that we have it's usually noticed or observed that the vix it rises very high because there can be an uncertainty in the market that tomorrow the market can actually go anywhere once the event is over so when the event is very high, you know when the vix is very high because your volatility is high so the option premiums are also very relatively high and when the event gets over there's a drop a significant drop seen in the india vix or the volatility on an a general level and because the vix falls the premiums also fall so usually what happens is that before the event when the premiums are very high and after the premium after the event the premiums they fall because the vix has also fallen down so in this case maybe the movement has come in the market but the premiums have not moved in a put in a in a desired direction only reason is because vix falls when vix or volatility falls the premiums also fall so this is a huge difference that see so this is one of the factors if you remember we uh, explain one of the most important factors that uh, affects the option stocks pricing this is one of the major reasons how it affects the premium or the pricing of the options so this is to understand how the relationship between the market and the indebits reacts so it is usually inversely proportional but not generally acts always in that same way now there are two kinds of important volatility parameters to understand so one is a historical volatility and another is an implied volatility in the next slide we'll see what implied volatility and historical volatility actually means so implied volatility popularly known as iv it is a measure of projected volatility which is dependent upon how expensive options are in the marketplace so what happens is that iv just gives you a hint of how expensive option premiums are so usually iv is always directly direct, directly proportional to the option prices it means that if the iv is high your option prices are high if the iv is falling your option prices are also falling so we have the strike prices that we saw every stock every individual every individual stock has a different or a set of predetermined levels at which you can buy and sell which is known as a strike price so each strike price has a different iv factor as the strike prices they reduce your ivs also uh, your iv increases usually and usually what happens is that if your iv if your strike prices is moving or at the atm or at the same level of where the spot price is your iv remains a little low so implied volatility usually allows the trader with a cursory glance to understand how expensive the option premiums are for example in its simplest use we can see we can compare that supposedly abc currently trading at maybe 120 130 supposedly and uh, if you compare the 120 put with the 100 put so 120 put may have an implied volatility of 40% or 44% but the 100 put of that same stock can have an implied volatility of 55% so ideally 120 put has a 40% iv but 100 and 100 put has a uh, you know 55% iv something of that sort so in this case we say that the 100 put price is a little expensive than what it actually should be as a fair value 
So this helps us, this IB factor will help us to understand how expensive the option premiums are. So when IV is usually greater than your historical volatility, or we say it as your HV, traders generally believe that options are very overvalued. So it may not be a right time for traders to enter into that option. And if the IV is lower than your historical volatility or HV, traders believe that options are undervalued. It might be a right time for buying of that option because it is undervalued. So historical volatility or HP is nothing but it is just referred to as a statistical volatility which gauges the fluctuation of important securities by measuring price change over a predetermined period of time. So a historical volatility measures the past metrics. It will show on a past data of how the volatility has behaved in terms of the option pricing. But your IP, that is your implied volatility, it, it gives you a projected volatility, a projected volatility of what the option pricing should actually be in a future date. So this is the difference between IVs and HVs. Obviously, all the data is obviously all always available from the main NSC site. So any kind of data that you require, you can actually always visit nsindia.com and you can get the IV or HV data of all the individual strikes from uh, X number of data. Moving on to the next slide, you can see the screenshot in a pro terminal where you can locate the IVs. Again, the example is of the stock NIT technologies. You can see from the option chain over here, we have a all these strike prices and you can see the call and the put side. So there's a small yellow arrow, uh, arrow button which is pointing downwards where you can see IV is written. So here you, this is the IV of all the individual strikes. So if you see a 1050 call option on the left hand side, which is a call. So if you see a 1050 has an IV of 45.90 and an 1100 call option strike has a 45.92. So this is how all IVs you can see of all these strikes. And always remember when the IV of any lower strike is at a higher percentage of the highest strike than the highest strike, it means that the option premium is expensive or overvalued. So this is how IVs or implied volatility measures that expensive factor for us for in all of the option prices. Right. So three in important parameters we've covered. One is your open interest, one is your put call ratio, and the third is your volatility. And in that volatility, we've covered the implied volatility and historical volatility. Now moving on to the next slide. This is a last and important parameter under derivative. It is known as rollovers. In very simple language, rollover means that a trader squares off the position of this current month and is taking the similar position in that same stock in the next series or the next month contract. So traders, they roll over futures contract to switch from the current or also known as the near month contract to the next or maybe the far month by taking the same position. It is very important to remember that rollovers can only happen in futures and not in options. So rollover is only calculated against futures. Where the trader is still having some bullish or bearish, whatever the view could be as per dif different traders. And the trader is holding that same view for another extended period of time, for the next 20-30 days and wants to continue his position. But because derivatives has this expiry thing every last Thursday of the month, so he cannot continue in that same series beyond Thursday. So what he does is that he squares off the position of this current month and he takes a similar position in that same stock in the next month. Because he has a continued, uh, continued action of that or continued view on that stock in the same direction. So this, is, this action is uh, called as rollover. So rollover is an indicator of the trader's willingness to carry forward the bets on the market. So because he's taking the same position for the next contract, in the next contract for the next 20 days or so, and he is betting that this stock would again go in that particular level in which he has he has traded. So this is why rollover will give you that trader's willingness to understand whether it is on the long side or on the short side. So rollovers typically take place in futures of forwards because they are classified as promises but options then the rollovers do not happen because they are classified as right there's no obligation attached to it 
Now, how to calculate rollover? If you see from this example, we have a stock ABC futures and the rollover is taking place from May to June series. So the ABC open interest of May series is 8853000 shares and the ABC open interest of June series is 19696350 shares. So there's a, an ABC open interest of July series is only 8 lakh. 8.35 lakh shares as you can see so how to calculate this abc rollover percentage it is of the next series plus the near par month series so one nine one nineteen point six nine lakh shares plus eight point three five lakh shares divided by again it's all the three months that you'll have to calculate so rollover percentage is actually calculated as again i'll repeat the next month series open interest plus the far month series open interest divided by the current month open interest, next month open interest and far month open interest. So over here, 19.69 lakh shares plus 8.35 lakh shares divided by 88.53 lakh shares plus 19.69 lakh shares plus 8.35 lakh shares. And if you convert it into percentage terms, it comes up to be 69.87%. So for this stock, we say that the rollover for ABC futures from May to June series is seen at 69.87. It means that 69.87 people or the traders have rolled over their position to the next series in this particular stock. Now, usually rollover, if it is compared with the last three months or it could be compared with the last six months also. And if this current month's rollover is generally higher than the last three months average or the last six months average, it is considered as a healthy rollover. It means that majority of the people or, you know, more, more rollovers have happened on the long side. So this is how it is usually or generally analyzed on a rollover basis. But to understand it in a more detailed fashion, how exactly the rollover has taken place, we must compare it with the roll cost as well. Roll cost is nothing but it will tell you at what basis, maybe in percentage or point basis, the positions get carried forward from this series to the next series. So this is a rollover cost. Because when you are rolling your position from this series to the next series, there's a cost attached to it. So this cost, uh, you know, paired along with your rollover percentage will give you a much clearer a clearer view so how the roll cost is calculated again it's a next series price minus the current series price divided by the current series price converted into a percentage term so if the current series price of abc is at 1500 and the next price series price is at 1550 so your roll cost is calculated as 1550 minus 1500 divided by 1500 the percentage it comes to 0.03 percent so your roll cost is 0.03 percent now if the roll over is high like we said you know 69.87 percent the roll cost is at 0.03 percent so you it, you again would have to compare it with the last three months average or maybe a last six months average if your rollover percentage is high if your rollover cost is also high we generally it is believed that the traders are rolling the position more onto the long side. So this could be an analysis, an important analysis of how rollover is understood or how many positions or how many traders have taken position in that same bet for the next series in a particular stock. So every individual stock will have a different rollover percentage. Every indices will have a different rollover percentage, but it is always worthwhile or always useful to compare it with the last three months or the last six months average right so this is the last important indicator or parameter of derivative now moving on to the next slide again a screenshot from the pro terminal where an individual stock you can see the rollover percentage so this is a screenshot of again the same stock nit technology limited and you can see that yellow arrow pointing towards the right hand side, you see that it's a rollover percentage. So on a day to day basis, rollovers, they, they take at a very minor basis when it's in the beginning of the series. But most of the rollover is always seen in the last week of the expiry. So usually 
two three days before the expiry has to happen rollovers of the trade roll traders start to roll over their position major majority of the rollover or final rollover is all be seen in the last day itself on the expiry day so from the beginning of the series you would always see at a very minute percentage maybe one percent two percent four five percent not much but obviously when the final day expiry week you've entered you would see it as thirty percent forty percent or when it comes out to the, the last expiry day, you can see this rollover percentage going up from 30, 20, 30% to 60, 70% kind. So this is where you can see the rollover of individual stocks on a day-to-day -day basis. Right, so these are the four important parameters that we have covered. Understanding the indicators, open interest, put call ratio, volatility and rollover. All the four parameters observed and analyzed on a daily basis will help us understand the sentiment of the market or in the particular stock itself. Moving on to the next slide, few important things that we must remember what to do and what not to do. We must always work on official research recommendations and avoid working on any anonymous tips that we get from the market or without research consultation. We must always identify a risk reward ratio and accordingly, we must take a considerable exposure and do not take risk, very high risk with limited reward kind of a ratio or not to take any exposure if we're not able to keep up with the M2M levels which we had covered in the previous webinar session. We must always follow a disciplined trading, that is we can maintain a stop loss, follow it on a disciplined trading practice or we must also understand how to hedge the positions. And the last thing that we must do is always be thorough of the concept and be informed always. Some few important parameters of what to do and what not to do. And in the last next slide, you can see how to trade with us. You can visit our website hdfcsec.com. You can download our mobile application. You can subscribe to our pro terminal as well. To view all our research recommendations, when you visit hdfcsec.com, there's a tab, research tab. If you click on it, you can see all our research recommendation and its respective reports under that tab. If you want to get into, if you want to have the online privilege for derivative, there is a tab called products. Click on the product, you can see derivative product and under that derivative, you would see a de online derivative privilege. So once you click on the derivative privilege, you will be routed towards or guided towards the online privilege where you just have to accept the terms and conditions and get your online derivative privilege. And how to start trading? You can trade with this via mobile application. You can trade with this with call and trade and you can also trade on an empowered site or in the pro terminal itself. Pro terminal, again, it's a web trading platform which helps us to understand accurate market decisions. Now, in the last slide, you can just walk for the next two web webinars, our upcoming webinars. On 16th of June, you have a learning on the option hedge trading. And the last webinar would be how to make a trading plan. Once we have covered all the webinar session, the last webinar would be on understanding how to exactly make a trade plan using all these parameters. Right, so this is where the webinar ends and I hope it has been clear and easy to understand all these important parameters. If there are any questions, you can just type on it and I will address those questions immediately. Thank you. Okay, our first question is from, our first question is from Anjali. From Pune, who's asking how do the concepts of long built up, short built up, long unwinding, short covering work with options? Anjali, it works in the same way. Open interest is always understood if your open interest is positive. If your price is positive, it's a long built up. If your open interest is positive, your price is negative, it's a short built up. So you can actually analyze this for individual futures or you can analyze this for individual option strike also. So let's say for one option strike, you're seeing the open interest is high and your, and your price is also increasing or the premium is increasing for that option. It's a case of long build up. So it is always measured and understood in the same manner. The next question is from Mr. Light who's asking, if I buy one call or put option before expiry, can I square it off? Yes, you can always square it off before expiry. And as I said, because if you do not square it off, then the exchange automatically will square it off on the expiry date. 
if you're buying and if your position is in positive positive trade or if your stop loss has been met, you can square it off at any point of time you want. The next question is from Mr. Snehal who is asking what is mean by long build up. Snehal again, long build up is understood by the open interest price and volume action. If your open interest is positive, if your price is positive and your volume is also good or heavy, we say it's a long build up. When we say it's long build up, it means generally the sentiment is deemed bullish or on the upside for the coming trading sessions in that particular stock. Uh, Shalin is asking what is an average PCR to take the call upon to trade. See, every stock and every indices could have a separate PCR. So, unlike I said, PCR, if it is at relatively higher levels, it is understood that it is, uh, you know, going to have a bearish view or the bearish sentiment for the coming trading sessions. But if the PCR is trading at relatively lower levels, the sentiment is deemed bullish for the coming trading session. So every stock would have a separate PCR level. So it cannot be just, you know, an average PCR for one stock or, or you know, just one average PCR working for all the other stocks. Every stock would have a different separate PCR range altogether. Because there are 237 stocks, I the stocks to remember. It won't be exactly easy to understand and remember all the PCR levels. Okay, Mr. Suyog is asking, what does long unwinding and short covering means? So, Mr. Suyog, long unwinding means when your open interest is negative, your price is also negative. And there is no such important volume action happening. It's a case of long unwinding. It means that the positions are being squared off. And short covering means when your open interest is negative, but your price is positive. It is a case of short covering. It means that the stock has fallen a quite a lot and there's some rebound or bounce back seen. And in that bounce back, traders square up the position. So both this long unwinding and short covering, they are known as the intermediate phase where, your, uh, where the trend is not exactly ever clear because the open interest, the contracts get squared off. So there's no fresh contracts, no fresh positions being built in these two phases. Okay, uh, Mr. Santosh is asking, is there any percentage parameter fixed for long built-up, short built-up, short covering, unwinding? Uh, no, so there's no such parameter fixed. Even if it's a percentage of 1% positive you see, it would be considered as the open interest is positive. Even if the open interest is up by 0.5%, it is still considered a positive session. So you have to always understand and analyze it with the price action to see what kind of activity is being formed. So there is no such percentage parameter. Okay, what is the importance of open interest? So open interest, again, understanding it is the number of contracts open or the number of outstanding contracts. So when traders keep the contracts open, they only have one reason because they're expecting a movement to come in that particular security for a coming trading session. So it is important to understand which line or which activity have they kept it open and that activity can only be understood if we pair it against price action and volume action to understand what activity is being formed generally. So that is the importance of open interest. How to identify call and put writing and its importance? This would be quite a detail, Mr. Vikram has asked this question. This would be quite a detail because it has to be actually analyzed on a daily basis of understanding when we pair it with put call ratio factor, we pair it with IV factor, we pair it with the data actually coming in. So then only we get to know exactly how much of call writing or put writing takes place depending on uh, the open interest changes. So it would be quite a, you know, extensive, uh, extensive kind of uh, analysis which obviously it won't be easy for us to cover, but I'll certainly make sure that I'll reply to this question. And all the other questions also, I, there are a lot of questions coming up, so I would be replying to all the questions individually to the mail. And uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this session. Looking forward to the next session. And this is where we'll end it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you.